Hello everyone, I am Bradley Swart, Associate Professor of Computer and Information Science at the College of DuPage in Glen Ellen, Illinois. This video today is a continuation on advanced functions using the runtime stack, pushing and popping, ESP, all of that kind of stuff. And we're going to look at a slightly more advanced problem than the activity from last time. So this is our problem right here. It's a square root function, an integer square root function that does a little bit of work. It does not do anything in hardware. It just uses repeated operations to get the job done. And so it, it's going to take, it's going to have a return type. It's going to have a parameter passed in. It's going to have two local variables. So it's a little bit of a step up, and we're also going, getting a little more complicated in the main function as well. Let's get the main out of the way first. Um, I'm, I'm going to use a register for this here. I'm going to just use, uh, let's see, what can I use? I will use uh, EBP or ESP. Uh, pfft, how about EBX? I'll use EBX, and I'll say put zero in there. Because what is a for loop but a while loop? And what is any loop but a repeated if statement, right? A while. And then I could steal this guy, bring this out, and then I can, let me just, and then just for the sake of this, let me just change i and change it into ebx so we can kind of get a feel for what's going on. I brought it over here so I can modify this quite a bit. And so what I can also do here is bring this down, because that's what I'm doing when I'm changing a for loop into a while loop. So here we go, and I just need to go ahead and find all the rest of the I's, which is two more. <coughs> Excuse me. And there we go. So that's what I've got going for me now. So I've got, and I need two labels. Again, I need an again and a done. Make this, get this job done. And so let's see. Put zero in, do a comparison. PMP, X, comma 100. And remember again, in high-level languages, we care about what do we have to do to, do to continue the loop, but when we're doing this in low-level assembly language, we have to do what do we have to do to end the loop. So the opposite of less than or equal to is greater than, jg, uh, jump if greater than to done. And then this is just an unconditional jump to again, and that sets up the entire loop. And just, I always forget this one, so let me just, let me do that here and just say ink ebx here. So what have we done? We've done this line of code, we've done this line of code, this line of code, and then we're ready to go. And and technically, I guess if you want to think about it, the, the braces, because that's this is the body of the loop. Compare, jump to done if done, otherwise do stuff in here, increment EBX, and then go back around again. Okay, so now we have some other stuff to do. Let's figure out, let's do this. Uh, I'll just call it square root, byte the square root of that comma zero. Remember the null terminating character. So let's see, now we're in here, move into edx, offset of square root, all right string. Okay, and then print out ebx, so I have to move that into eax and call right int. Um, okay, and then there's this one here. I'll call it is. I don't. I think I'll get away with it. And then that's got a space. I s like that. And then I can do the same thing here for that print statement. Okay, that takes care of that. Let's see if we can. Let's see if this does it at the moment. It's gonna work. There we go. <laughs> so we have a hundred. We have a hundred loops. The square root of zero is, the square root of one is, the square root, of, so things are getting better. I mean, it's already kind of working, right? So we've already, so we've taken care of this, we've taken care of this, we've taken care of this. Um, let's see, so remember how, just like everything else, when a function returns, EAX holds the value, so we're not gonna worry about that. Again, this is just trying to approximate as best as I can. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna see out, <laughs> I'm gonna see out. I am going to move, uh, well, I'm going to call right int here. So I still have this to do, the actual function. That's, you know, that's the rest of everything to go. But I'm going to do, I'm doing this here. I'm gonna, this is value is going to be an EAX. I'm going to print it out. And then I'm going to do an end line. Call right int. Call uh, ERLF. 
and let's see what we come up with. So let's see what comes out of it. Okay, so we have a loop that goes from 0 to 100. And it's printing out all the square well, that it's printing out all the square roots, which we haven't done the function yet. But you can see we're on the right track. We have a loop going. And now all we have to do is create this function to modify EAX so that everything comes out exactly like we expect. But the main is almost done. So what to do here to finish it up, you know, is to uh, understand our new, our new way of passing parameters. If I'm going to be passing EBP, I'm going to put that on the stack. I'm going to put EBP, or EBX on the stack. Sorry again. I'm putting EBX on the stack. I'm calling square root. And that's it. Because then the you know, everything else is going to be taken care of in the function. And then when it returns back, the EAX will hold the value, which I will call. So let me just put this here. Where's main? Get rid of main. And let me put in square root. Uh, proc. Ret. Square root end p. And let's just, oops, I'll fix that up in a second. And we're right back where we were. because And now everybody is still happy. And now the main is officially done. And now all we have to do is come up here and finish up the square root function. So I do have everything inside of Visual Studio here so I can modify things and, and try things out and make sure I'm doing things right as I try to move myself forward. And remember, anything that we're dealing with parameters when it comes to how to use the EBP register and everything is on the plus side. And the first parameter is always stored at plus 8, EBP plus 8. So anytime I see X here, I'm just going to go ahead and replace the X with the plus 8. And let's just run this again, just make sure everything's working like we expect it to. And yes, I'm, getting, I'm still getting correct results. And so now that's, that's the uh, parameter that get, gets passed in. Local variables are on the minus side. So anytime I see square root, I can say, I can call it minus four. And so, and so plus eight is on, you know, like everything starts at eight on the plus side. Everything starts at minus four on the minus side. So anytime I see square root, I can replace it. Oops. And then anytime I see subtractant, that could be my minus eight. And this is kind of what the you know the what your program, your assembler, your compiler, and all that is doing when you work this out. It's just changing up symbols to something that's you know easier for the computer to work with. You know, it's, and if you ever seen linker errors, you know, if you ever, especially in C if you end up in linker hell that you can see that all, you know, what were these symbols replaced with? Your local, your little x variable is replaced with something that's 10, 20 characters long. But let me just see, make sure this is right. Make sure I'm still getting the correct answers. And now, yep, I still am getting everything like I'm expecting to. So now I'm ready to move this forward and move this over and start playing with the square root function. Okay, so let's take a look at that. Okay, so anytime you have uh, local variables or parameter passing, you have to do this thing with the EBP, where you push EBP on the stack, you move ESP into it, and then at the end of the day, you pop it back. So we have our push, we have our pop, and then we can modify it however we want. We already go ahead and do that. And remember now, on the ret side, since we're, de we're dealing with this, is that I passed in one parameter, so to get that thing to pop off the stack, because we're pushing it down here, but we actually pop it off at the end of the function, and that's what this 4 is indicating. Pop, and, it, and we don't care what, you know, that's the difference. We don't care, we want it, we're done with it. We don't care where it goes, we just want it trashed. We don't, that's, you know, we could pop it into something if we wanted to, but we don't care. Everything that, at this, when we hit, hit this line of code, everything that we ever needed with that is gone. So we could just say, just trash it, and so we can just add four here, and that's essentially my pop. Okay, so then now to finish things up on this side, when I have my, my two local variables, then this is where the subtraction occurs, and I say subtract uh, ESP comma eight. Again, four times the two uh, local variables that I'm trying to set up, and I add on the other side. So now, you know, so remember everything is a, you know, it's a stack, it's a, it's a runtime stack, so every push and every pop and every move has to have an equal and opposite reaction on the other side as we're cleaning up. So a sub gets an add, the push gets a pop, this push gets a pop, and everybody's back to normal now. Okay, 
So now let's set up these variables. This just sets up the memory structure. We haven't even done any of the actual code here. So let's go ahead and do that. And so the first item of business here is just to move into D word pointer, whatever's at EBP minus four, move a zero. So, I'm, so the minus four is gonna be a zero and the minus eight is gonna be a one, just like we're talking about here. So that's what these guys do. And now remember when it comes to while loops, again, a while loop is just a repeated if statement. And so what to make this thing work, I need two labels and again and a done. I'll need some kind of comparison. I'll need to do an unconditional jump back. And then when the done hits, blah, 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 yabba, yabba. Okay, but here's our comparison. And remember that we're these, you know, what is plus eight? What is minus eight? They're both uh, items that are on my runtime stack. So they're both sitting in my RAM. They're both memory. And I can only access in one line of assembly language, I can only access one of them at a time. So I'm going to have to move one of them into the register. And I'm going to use the minus eight. And then I can do my comparison and I can say compare whatever's at D word pointer EBP. Let me make sure I get this right. Plus eight. Compare that to EAX. So now this eight. So I'm comparing the plus eight to minus eight. And I want to do what do I, how do I want to compare this? Remember in high level languages, we think, how do we keep this loop going? When we're writing assembly language, we think the opposite. How do I get this thing to stop? And the opposite of greater than or equal to is less than. JL done. And so if this thing, we're going to loop, we're going to loop, notice the jump again. So it does work. It's going to do this work, come back again, and then compare again. And eventually when we write this code out, we'll get out, we'll be able to jump out, do done, set this guy up for the return, clean up everything and call it a day. That's the goal here. This is, this is an infinite loop right now as it is. Okay. So that takes care of that. And now let's, this is the only hard part here. So we're doing almost the exact same thing as we did here with the comparison. But instead of a compare, we're doing a subtraction. And instead of all this other stuff, what are we doing here? Oh, maybe I don't even have to touch it. Wow, interesting, right? Because I'm just subtracting off. So I'm taking minus EBP minus 8, moving it into the register, and I'm subtracting off whatever's in EBP plus 8. So yes, I'm just taking the comparison, train, cha changing it into subtraction, and I think we have ourselves a winner. And then just to finish this guy up here, let's just do that. Add uh, EBP into D word pointer, EBP minus eight. And then subtract two. And then this guy here, plus plus minus four, I need to do an increment D word pointer, EBP minus four. And let's see what we get. Let's see if we get the answers. And then even if we get that, we're not just we're not done just yet. We're almost well, we might be done. We'll have to check it out. Oops, I am not getting the answer I was anticipating. I'm getting something kind of close, but I'm not getting, and the reason for that is, well, maybe not. I don't know. I'll have to check it out. I was I was expecting, as always, like you guys do too, I was expecting to see the correct answer. But somewhere in my translation, I, I missed something. So, and you probably, you maybe already see it and you're screaming out at me and I'll figure it out and I'll let you know in one minute here. So do you get the, get why we're not getting the right answers? And the right, the, the reason we're not getting the right answers is we are not filling the EAX register correctly. We, we've done everything but that final statement, the return statement. So remember that right here, right after we finish this loop, we need to move and say we, we have agreed that the EAX register will hold these kind of values. Whatever is at D word pointer EBP minus four will, will be put into EAX, get returned back, and then that is my return value. So there we go. And now we have, let's just make sure, let's see. Zero, one, four, nine, 16. It looks like we have our solution. It looks like we have everything and we're ready to go. So my final step here is now that I have a working solution, I have a working square root function, my main is working properly, is to go back through here and go other than EBP and ESP, which are already taken care of, and EAX, which is my return value, the other five registers, EBX, ECX, EDX, ESI, and EDI, 
do any of those five registers get modified in my function? And if they do, then I got to push pop here and here in reverse order, you know, push and pop in reverse order from where they came. So let's, let's just go ahead. Again, EBP and ESP are already taken care of. We already did that up front. Let's see. No, no. EAX, not to worry. Nope. EAX, not to worry. Nope, nope, nope. Memory doesn't count, just registers. And then EAX, no. So actually, we are actually done. There are no other registers, and there's no surprises here, like division and loop and multiplication, those have surprises. Those modify registers indirectly, and we don't necessarily see them outright. But here, we're not using anything that, that tricks that up and makes it indirectly you know, unapparent to us. So we did it. We're done. Let's, get, let's see if I can get this all on one page without it being, oh, it's going to be ridiculous. But there you go. That is everything there is to go to get this thing working in my x86 assembly language uh, program here. So thanks for sticking it out with me as always. If you have any questions, um, always comment below or send me an email at swordb at cod.edu. So we got one more week of this stuff, one more of uh, slightly more complicated problems. We'll actually start looking into uh, the, the beginnings of recursion, which looks into recursion, which looks into recursion, which looks into recursion, which looks into recursion, and so forth and so on. And then uh, it's finals week. You have made it through. You are done with this class. You are ready to move on to bigger and better things. So uh, have a great day, everybody. Have a great time. And uh, we'll see you next time in the next video.